Love Talk Radio. Welcome to the magical world of Oberon and Ariel. Their continuing mission to explore strange new realms, to seek out new ideas and new possibilities, to boldly go where no show has gone before. And now, over to Oberon and Ariel. <coughs> Good evening. I'm Oberon. And I'm Ariel. And this, and this is, is our, our show. show. Here, our guest tonight is Michael Sartomi. She is an author, an artist, and a retired teacher of metaphysics and the occult arts, and she's an active indigenous shamanism. She's into. She's educated in anthropology and modern literature, and she has journeyed in pursuit of truth that she translates into vivid paintings and equally compelling stories. A reincarnationist, prodigious life, past life memory has motivated her passions in genetic genealogy, her story, and the Levant. The Oregon wine country in the Pacific Northwest is her home, her little piece of heaven. And uh, her first historical novel, The Emancipation of Giles Corey, won the Indie Excellence Award for Best Historical Fiction of 2011, honorable mention for the Hoffer Award, and was a finalist for the Montaigne Medal. Wow. Mm-hmm. And Michael can be contacted through her main website, uh, michaelsortomi.com. Mm-hmm. So and welcome, Sortomi, Michael. Sortomi is S-O-R-T-O-M-M, as in Mary E. dot com. Right. Thank you. Yes. It's a great website too, by the way. Cool. Hi. Well, Michael, welcome. Hello. Hi, Thank Michael. Thank you for having me. So Hello. wonderful Welcome to meet place. you. And it is Sortome. Sortome. Sort of okay. Uh-huh. okay. It so sounds sorry. French, but it is Norwegian. It's Norwegian. Oh, sort of yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, well you come from go, an interesting uh, family. I mean, your father was doing like Kundalini yoga back in the 1920s or something. Yes, he was. Oh. Yeah. He was, and um, <laughs> he um, he met my mother, as a matter of fact, when he was in the ashram in Southern California in the 50s, <laughs> and he yeah. had. Uh, Weekend art shows at the boys' club, and that's where wow. they met. Huh. So the rest is history. <laughs> was your dad? Wasn't hmm. your dad involved in the Theosophical Society? Yes, he was. He was. Yeah. Uh, right. Richard Sortome. He was a um, Norwegian artist, obviously, and and um, uh, a student of Emhoff, and one of the Taos Ten painters. Um, in, that were very active between uh, 1900 and uh, 1935, I'd say. Mm. And um, he he was pretty. He was a brilliant man. He was. Wow. It just sounds you like a fun family. family. Yeah. Well, it was family. it was a bizarre family. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, definitely co- counterculture. And uh, in in an article I said once that it was alternative before alternative was an option. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he was married. My father was married seven times, so it really complicated uh, early <laughs> childhood for lots and lots of kids. <laughs> that would be <Wow>. confusing. <laughs> But my my mother was uh, was a fascinating person as well. She was uh, a numerologist and. Uh, and a fantastic scholar. She studied um, Pythagorean theory for 20 years. She, so she was quite a powerhouse herself and, and an artist as well. So what about you? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Well, gosh, um, I think my main thrust, as you said, Oberon, was, uh, has been a, as a teacher of metaphysics in the occult art. And uh, I've been a ritual facilitator since 14, and mm-hmm. so naturally that became um, uh, one of the subjects I taught for many years. And uh, but I'm, I'm a workaholic by nature and my own toughest critic, and so that led me to a career as a multimedia artist and a historian, and at one time a gourmet as well. Gourmet. I was um, a trained chef. Really? Um, early oh. on, yeah, early on after college. Uh-huh. Wow, I'm I'm amazed that I haven't met you before because you sound so great. You know, it's just well, I've been a fan of yours for for decades. 
So. Really? Well, we'll mm. have to, then we'll have to make that more mutual. I'm very impressed. So you have two books out now. Um, yes, I do. your latest one. Yeah. The new one is The Sensitive Circle, Finding Balance and Creative Ho- Creating Hope. Tell us about it. Well, it's a guide for spiritual survival. It's mm. geared to uh, dealing with the complexities of our time, which are plentiful, as we all know. Um, my target audience are the caretakers and the psych, the psychics and the healthcare professionals um, mm-hmm. that are active in society today. There are modern day shamans mm-hmm. and uh, tire, tirelessly working for others, whether paid or not. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this this is my this is my audience. Um, I feel. Uh, connected to these sensitives because I am one, mm-hmm. and um, so I. My goal with Sensitive Circle is to have it um, as a soul bomb for mm-hmm. sensitives from many cultures and backgrounds, so they can hold on to it as a friend when mm-hmm. the going gets rough, when disaster hits, which is an everyday occurrence in our mm-hmm. world today. And when a simple reminder to breathe can mean the difference between life and death. I know it sounds grandiose, but that is oh, no, my I, motivation. It's, it's very important. Never stop breathing, you know. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's amazing, you know. Uh, I know I do this. Sometimes I just simply forget to breathe, you know. <laughs> and I know I'm breathing, but, I mean, it's very shallow. And that can create a lot of health problems, right there. It certainly can. It certainly can. And and when you're breathing very shallow, it means that you're in a fear situation. So you're, if you stay in that process, you, like you said, are going to compromise your whole body, and particularly your immune system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oxygenation. That's what we need for our for our brain. So uh, it's a natural response to hold our breath when we're stressed. Uh-huh. And uh, we're all stressed in this day and age, each and every one of us. Indeed. Yeah. 